Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PwC's Risk and Regulation News Channel. Today we will again make a deep dive into the SREP results 2023 and the supervisory SSM priorities for the years 2024 and beyond. In our previous videos we gave you already an overview about the um, uh, general results of the SREP process 2023 and the supervisory priorities. Today again we will go deep into the details. And one topic both in the SREP results 2023 and in the supervisory priorities that is on top of the agenda of the ECB is operational resilience. And today I'm going to cover this topic together with my colleague Philipp Schulz. Philipp is a director here in Germany and is a part of our SSM workstream focusing on operational resilience. Philipp, nice to have you here. How are you? Feeling very great. Happy to be here and talk a little bit about DORA and operational resilience with you. Great. <laughs> and there you mentioned already one important word and that is DORA. Uh, when I hear about operational resilience and both the SSM priorities and the SREP results 2023, the term DORA appears very often. Can you please explain to our viewers that are maybe new to this topic, what actually is operational resilience and the context uh, with regard to DORA? Okay. Pleasure. So first of all, I think DORA should be explained. So DORA stands for Digital Operational Resilience Act. So focusing on operational resilience, which is a broader topic that is quite global at the moment, to be really be robust against any outages, any disruptions in your business, be it more of a political, global or local perspective and also maybe for example from any IT d outages or cyber attacks or anything like that. And that's where DORA comes into the play because the D is quite important in that case because they're really focusing on the digital part of it. So how can financial services institutes prepare for being resilient from an IT perspective to have a robust IT system that maybe cyber attacks or any outages mm -hmm. Do, do not uh, implicate your, your business and that you can be robust and having your services up running all the time. And that's also very important um, because of the SREP topic to have this systemic relevance uh, of any financial institute and to be robust that they don't fall out of the market and yep. rattle the whole system as we've seen maybe sometimes in the past. Yep. And that sh shouldn't happen from an IT perspective and that's what Dora focuses on. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that was really helpful to get like really an introduction to this overall topic. Um, IT, operational resilience, um, yeah, I would say that is already on top of the agenda of the ECB and other regulatory um, agencies for, for many years. And there are a lot of regulations regarding that topic already in place. So what makes DORA actually different and why is it so important for our clients? Yeah. So I think what, what DORA makes it different or what is the main topic at first is it focusing or focuses on harmonizing the regulation for all FS institutes across the whole European Union. So that's really new because we have lots of local and different regulations. So <laughs> coming from Germany, we know that, that we have a lot of regulation already in the financial services sector. And DORA really focuses on harmonizing these regulations across the European Union and it's also quite relevant because of the nature of DORA, because the A stands for ACT, so that really means it's enforced by law by the European Commission and it's not like local regulation. It's not nice to have. No. It's not nice to have, you have to do it mm -hmm. and every country has to do it and it's also a standard based on the published version of DORA, so it's not like any other directive you have to implement locally, like it is with, for example, some other regulations. So it's really binding in that case, and that's that's really special. From from a perspective internally, it's also really focusing on an end-to-end -end approach on operational resilience in that case, on a digital point. So really trying to set up a complete framework for operational resilience mm -hmm. that is fitting together, is holistic in that case, and to, to bring all the different topics together. And last but not least, what is also special, we already know, for example, from the EBA guidelines that they are quite detailed on what they are expecting. And DORA is this as well, because it DORA is the level one policy, mm -hmm. so the act, and we also have technical standards 
10 in total that are detailing some of the parts of it. So, and these uh, technical standards really go into details like the EBA guidelines mm -hmm. already did. But now for all the topics like ICT risk management, incident management mm -hmm. and reporting, and also third party risk management. And that focuses a little bit more on a rule based approach with really detail of what to do in the end. Thank you very much, Philip. Um, yeah, and the ECB in their SREP process 2023 had a lot of findings with regard to operational resilience, and uh, we would not stand here if DORA implementation would be um, an, an easy task. So uh, from your perspective, what are the biggest uh, challenges for the banks in implementing DORA and how to, to tackle these challenges? Yeah. Um, so maybe starting on a high level from a governance perspective, because Dora talks a lot about different topics that are normally currently in different departments, because we are talking about information security, we talk about risk management, we talk about incident management, third party risk management, business continuity management. You see a lot of different functions that have to work together to bring Dora into place with this holistic approach. And that means maybe also some organizational change on a governance perspective. Mm -hmm. So you should think about who's head of operational mm -hmm. resilience and who's responsible for this whole topic. In the end, Dora states out very clear, it's the board of directors and especially also the board of directors where business decisions are made. So it's a really high level topic to, mm -hmm. to implement, mm -hmm. but uh, you also need someone who's responsible operationally, mm -hmm. and that could be a head of operational resilience. And the discussion at the moment is who is that person, which functions does he combi combine, and that makes also some kind of like organizational mm -hmm. change necessary. Um, the second challenge we see is especially in the topic of operational security mm -hmm. because okay. Dora sets out quite clear what is mm -hmm. expected from financial institutes in that topic and goes really detailed into some specific technical topics mm -hmm. like encryption, like <laughs> network <laughs> security and segregation and so on. Yeah. I won't go <laughs> too much into yeah. the technical details, but what I see and that's, that's my experience and I think that uh, fits quite well also mm -hmm. to the SREP results is that many clients have homework to do in, in these areas. So some, some have issues in the network, some have issues in cyber defense, so monitoring and responding to any attacks that are coming. And that's really the challenge where you also have big efforts to implement mm -hmm. robust systems f in that case to, to be resilient from an IT perspective. And the last part, which is also challenging, is third-party risk management. Mm. We already know EBA guidelines on outsourcing, but still DORA defines for ICT third parties uh, more detailed mm -hmm. requirements regarding the register of information and especially the focus on the concentration risk and the risk of sub-outsourcing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really a challenge for our clients because you have to go to your service provider and ask them how are they managing their third party risk and which service providers are they mm -hmm. using um, in the supply chain because that's normally a, a big risk as well because mm -hmm. think about you, you have a good provider here in Germany but maybe in the second or third level of uh, sub outsourcing so you maybe land in mm -hmm. some other areas and there is maybe not such a high standard of, of security of in that case and you have to be aware of at least mm -hmm. for the critical parts of your business where are your data where's your data managed where's your data stored and also which service providers are used and that's where we really dig in into working together with uh, financial institutes as well as third party providers how to set up the sole framework mm -hmm. uh, and getting this to work in, mm -hmm. in the end Okay, thank you very much, uh, Philip. When I uh, hear you speaking about Dora, I, I realize that it is really a big challenge and that there's a lot of uh, work to be done. And also if I look to the SREP results 2023, uh, the topic of operational resilience is very high and there are also a lot of findings actually from the ESB, uh, ECB um, within on-site missions. Um, so I could imagine that it's a quite big challenge um, to, to, to start actually yeah, working on this um, because there are so many topics that the banks have to, to handle. You do a lot of projects in, in with regard to operational resilience and with regard to Dora and you are very experienced. What would be your recommendation for our clients? Where to start? What are the most important topics that they should start on right way? Yeah, so I think from 
a timely perspective because we haven't talked about that. So Dora has to be implemented by January 2025, so just one year to go mm -hmm. from now on. So you have to focus on the right topics. And I think if you have, haven't done it yet, a gap analysis is always a good idea, especially combining this with current regulation you already have in place, for example, like in Germany, BAIT and so on, or the EBA guidelines. So mm -hmm. what we are doing is we come with a set of um, comparison mm -hmm. with current regulations and the new regulations from DORA so that we can focus on really the new parts, for mm -hmm. example. So, but a gap analysis is a good start. But nevertheless, I would also recommend, because of the timing, that you go also into implementation right away, because we already know some topics that are new. I mentioned already the register of information, and there are new data fields that you have to implement mm -hmm. and that you have to gather from your third party. So nevertheless, if you don't have already defined what, the I what a ICT service is, for example, or mm -hmm. what you have to do put into this mm. register, yep. you know what information you need. So start right away with implementing this register with the missing information, for example. Um, and then on one of the first steps is, and that's also wha where Dora is focusing on, is defining your critical and important functions. That's a um, concept we already know from EBA guidelines, for example, yep. but to be honest, I think it's not completely implemented in the market yet. So you really have to think about what are my, my critical services mm -hmm. from a service perspective, so an outside perspective yeah. to the market, and that's normally missing in the mm -hmm. um, in the work that has been done in the past mm -hmm. in business continuity management and so on, and really to define this critical and important functions because mm -hmm. these are then the functions you have to focus on most mm -hmm. for defining this. So we have an approach where we say, okay, we're using current methodologies, for example, for defining this critical or important functions, mm -hmm. and then to focus on the implementation, especially on these topics. And that's also m my, my next recommendation to really think about what can be done until January 2025 and to focus on the risk areas, mm -hmm. to start with them and have a clear prioritization and maybe also an outline for the upcoming years because DORA and implementing operational resilience is more like a marathon than a sprint because mm -hmm. you have to go on with this because there are tho so many topics and so much effort in it. You won't be ready completely by January 2025, but you have to go with this. And maybe last but not least, because we're talking a lot about regulation and so on. From my perspective, what's really important here is DORA focuses on operational resilience and we see uprising cyber attacks um, and dependence on IT every day mm -hmm. coming with AI and so on. It even gets more IT mm -hmm. and digitization in it. So operational resilience also from an IT perspective is really an important topic. Mm -hmm. And you should think about strategically how to implement these topics. So if, if we are doing this work, we are always thinking about not only how can I comply and put my policies in place and mm -hmm. so on, but we are also always trying to set up what could be a good technical solution in that case, for example, for vulnerability management, for third-party risk management, to be efficient and mm -hmm. robust in, in that case. So working a lot with tech partners as well to, to implement the right cyber defense and the right tools to, to be efficient in the end because also the run cost is quite mm -hmm. high with Dora and also to really be more resilient in the end because I think that's that's a real goal of Dora mm -hmm. and not only to have nice policies but yeah. also to have a robust IT infrastructure in that case. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Philip, uh, for this great overview. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it already for today. I would like to repeat two things that Philip said today, which I think bring it really to the point, what is important about DORA and operational resilience. The first one was uh, start right away. Uh, doesn't matter if you're starting with a gap analysis uh, or directly with the uh, implementation, you need a combination of that. And the second important thing that you mentioned was um, that this is not a boring regulation, it's a regulation that makes actually really much sense sense. Uh, there are a lot of uh, threats, cyber threats uh, uh, out there and banks have to be prepared um, for that um, simply to, to keep up with their, their business and uh, not creating too, too big losses. So thank you very much again, Philip. Pleasure.
Uh, it was a great conversation and thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.